put Mariana Spring in here, our disinformation and social media correspondent. With all her phones. What, with all your phones. T tell us about phones. the phones, Mariana. Oh, no. <laughs> I have five and then one that's my own. Um, and each of these phones uh, belong to the BBC's undercover voters. Um, they are five characters I've created based on data from the Pew Research Centre. Um, and they each have social media profiles across the five main sites, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and TikTok. And I've used them to... Uh, see what US voters are recommended, targeted with in the build-up to the midterms and today, tonight, um, as all the votes start coming in. OK, I know you're going to bring us information on that and what they're being bombarded with, but I want to talk to you about the information that's coming through about these voting machines in Maricopa County, Phoenix, Arizona. Crucially important. It's the big suburban areas where all the voters are in Arizona. And already Republicans are asking questions. Absolutely, and actually it links to our undercover voters because this is the kind of stuff they've been seeing on their feeds today. When, when the news first started coming out that some of the machines didn't seem to be working, um, people like uh, Brittany, Brittany is our populist right voter, she really likes Donald Trump, um, and she's followed a lot of content in support of him. She's been getting posts like this one, posts that are suggesting that actually the... Hold that up, up to the Mariana camera, let's so see. That can yeah. see that. So that's you go to saying something camera. true, which is allegations that machines aren't working, perhaps they're not working. But the important bit is you've then got campaigns asking for money, asking for money to help expose fraudulent elections. Um, and what's crucial is that, that, that there's something true here. And what's true is that people are saying, oh, look, these machines aren't working. That's fine. That's not the disinformation. The disinformation is how that is then used online to fuel existing narratives that have been spreading on social media and since the, the 2020 we, we election. Had, and we had that with Mark Fincham. He was effectively saying something's going on here well, that's that the is point. I was suggesting making. it's nefarious. It's an open question. I'm not pointing the finger. I'm just asking right. the question whether something nefarious is underway. Did the Democrats get the similar, same text? I mean, the, your, the profiles that you've created who are left-leaning, do they see that information? It's really interesting because when it comes to uh, Democratic mainstay Michael and progressive left Emma, who are two left-leaning characters, <laughs> um, they haven't. She been dreams about these people. <laughs> she <laughs> she knows them. She's well. becoming these people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they haven't been exposed to disinformation and hate in quite the same way. Um, actually, a lot of their social media feeds today have been focusing on um, how worried they are that this could threaten democracy and undermine democracy. Um, we have seen some hate and some slightly more violent rhetoric on progressive Emma's feeds in the weeks building up to the midterms but again if we compare it to um, populist right Britney's feeds even today and you were talking there about threats to um, people you know who are trying to protect election integrity and um, there are lots of threatening posts targeting politicians and those involved in the elections that are really quite explicit in some of the imagery they're showing and and all of the social media companies um, have made commitments to tackling disinformation and hate in the build-up to the midterms but when you look at these feeds there are examples that suggest there's stuff getting through the cracks and like you say sometimes the disinformation isn't always so stark. Sometimes it's someone saying, oh, maybe there's something more to this. Mm. And then a lot of other accounts will roll with it and you end up with this snowball. Ma Mariana, I remember in the 2016 election, we spent a lot of time covering uh, Russian-sponsored or Russian-financed disinformation that was being put into the, Americans, into the American electoral process. Is that still happening? Is it still a big factor or is, this, is most of this domestic that you're seeing? I think it's really interesting because since 2016, the disinformation landscape, as we call it, is much more complicated than perhaps it was even back then. And so trying to spot influence operations, trying to see if someone's trying to distort the conversation is very difficult because there's an organic conversation. There are people who are making accounts who are your average person who are capitalizing on this disinformation. And if you ran an influence operation, absolutely, you'd think of exploiting those narratives and those kinds of false claims or conspiracies. Um, but it's easy to blend in. And so it's not so straightforward and the social media sites do seem to have got a little bit better at identifying influence operations and taking them down but Pandora's box is wide open when it comes to this, this these kinds of allegations particularly about fraudulent voting. Ron aren't you glad that you don't have to delve into all of this and we have Mariana to do it for us? I am but I will tell you the greatest title that she has the disinformation correspondent I like being a political analyst. I want to be the disinformation <laughs> person. But yes, I, 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 am, I am glad that I have to delve into it. I'm glad that I have one phone, not five. Yeah. That's why we have you, my friend. And I'm glad I investigate this information <laughs> and spread it, which sometimes that title sounds like. <laughs> Mariana, thank you for keeping us in touch. We want to know what they're all, all of your multiple personalities, what they're going through during the course of the evening.